Hi, my name is Rich Bowen. I'm the CentOS Community Manager, and I'm here with another community update. After our last newsletter, I did an update video, and some of you said you want me to do this monthly. This month has kind of gotten away from me. It's been really busy, so there's a lot of things that I want to tell you about. First thing I want to mention is that we are planning to do another online dojo on October 7th and 8th. For those of you newer to the community, dojos are events where we cover technically deep content around the CentOS community. These are, of course, usually in person, but the last few have been online. This one will be, again, online October 7th and 8th. The call for presentations is now open and will close the first week of September. So if you have something you want to tell the community about, this is your opportunity. Sessions are 40 minutes, including any Q&A you want to have, and can be on any topic around the CentOS community, projects you're doing on top of CentOS Stream, CentOS Linux, or even potentially some of the rebuild projects. CentOS Stream 9 is starting to ramp up in earnest now, and it's now open for contributions. If you want to submit patches or feature requests into the CentOS 9 program, details about that are in the July newsletter. Again, the link to that's down below. Also in that newsletter, we have a great write-up about how CVEs are handled in CentOS Stream, written by community member Carl George. There's been some misinformation out there about how CVEs are handled or the rumor goes not handled in CentOS Stream. So Carl wanted to set the record straight on this and explain to you how that actually works. We want to mention one more time that we have moved our IRC presence off of Freenode to the new Libera.chat IRC platform due to some changes in the Freenode IRC community. So if you've been using IRC on Freenode, all of those same channels still exist, but you need to change your connect line to libera.chat instead of Freenode. The Hyperscale SIG recently published their quarterly report, and it's all interesting and worth reading, but I particularly want to call attention to this new experimental Hyperscale Workstation live DVD image. Like other live DVD images you may be familiar with, you can download this and boot from it and run it without installing it to the machine that you're running it on. This gives you an opportunity to try it out without actually damaging your existing system. The July Board of Directors meeting was extremely busy and extremely productive. I want to share a few things with you that we discussed in that meeting. You can read my full summary on the CentOS Devel mailing list, but there's a couple things I want to particularly call attention to. The first of these is a reminder that CentOS Linux 8 is coming to its end of life at the end of December of this year. And as we prepare for that, there were still some open questions about specific things and how we would handle them during that end of life process. So I want to point you to the mailing list, and I, I've posted a more detailed version of this that includes uh, details about exactly when the available content will go away. Uh, the status of the RHEL 8.5 rebuild, and certain other details that people have asked about. Also in that meeting, it was decided that starting in August, we're going to be opening our board meetings up to the entire CentOS community. This is part of our ongoing effort to make CentOS governance more transparent, more visible to the community members, and more accessible for you to participate and comment on the way that things are run in the community. The way to attend the meeting is going to be to follow the CentOS Devel mailing list, and prior to the meeting, we're going to be sending out an invite to that mailing list with instructions of how to join that meeting. So if this is something you're interested in, we welcome you to set aside time each month. It's the second Wednesday of each month, and those meetings are where the business of the project gets discussed and decided. One more thing I want to mention from the July board meeting is that we approved the creation of the Automotive SIG. Now, the Automotive SIG is a place where, as you can guess from its name, software will be developed and tested and packaged for running on cars. Now, this is 
everything from the security-centric parts of a car to the infotainment system that, that uh, plays your, your music and your navigation software. This is still in its very beginning stage, but if this is something you're interested in, either as a hobbyist or as part of your business, we encourage you to come attend the Automotive SIG meetings and find out what's happening there over the next few months. Last month I mentioned that we have added two new directors to the CentOS Board of Directors. Last week I interviewed both of them about what they hope to accomplish during their tenure on the board. And those videos are also in this same YouTube channel. So I encourage you to watch those. They're, they're nice and short. And give you a chance to get to know our two new directors who are helping shepherd the community over the coming year. Links to everything that I've discussed appear in the description of this video in the YouTube channel. If there's something you'd like to hear me address in future editions of this, please let me know. And we'll focus on that in the months to come. Once again, I'm Rich Bowen, the community manager for the CentOS project, and thanks for watching.